Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Lord is going to use all the people who are sick in this house, who are unwell in one way or the other. Uh, God is going to use the miracles in your lives to reveal to us who he is in London Shepherd's Church. Amen. I'll say that again. The Lord will use everyone who is ill, whether it is headache, arthritis, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, whatever that name is, emotional trauma, uh, 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 emotional uh, 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 emptiness, void, whatever it is that is happening in your life, God of the London Shepherd's Church, yes. we use your situation to show us as a mirror who he is to the amen. London amen. Shepherd Church. Amen. Shall I hear amen? amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I don't know what to say or where to start from. But I'm so humbled to stand before you. Before I carry on, I want to testify that I also have a testimony. <laughs> Since March, I've been hidden. I've been on house arrest. Let me put it that way. Since March, because of my essays, <laughs> to God be the glory, 6 a.m. this morning, I finished. Tomorrow is the deadline. After tomorrow, I will fail. I would have failed if I didn't finish it. And I cried in this house. Our pastor Paul will pray for me. I'll tell him, please pray for me. You know, our brother Patrick always calling to pray for me. I said yesterday when she went, brother Patrick called me around 12 midnight. I wasn't sure I was going to finish. I was just like, mm, yeah, he said, brother Patrick. He said, how are you doing? I said, mm, I'm okay. But I'm doing my best. <laughs> I did, I'm sure I didn't sound anything excited. But, and then I have to, I wanted to cancel preaching today. I said, no. Daddy, if it comes to the point where you have to cancel the things of God for your silly essay, then you have another thing coming. So I said, no, I'm not because I'm going to do it. So yesterday, instead of studying, I, uh, you know, I literally, I woke up around 3 p.m. By then, Pastor Paul has already sent message. And I, and then I woke up, I had to sort it for By the time I finished sorting everybody out, it was about 8, 9 p.m. I haven't studied. And I have an essay to write, and my deadline is tomorrow. I said, okay, Lord, what do I do? Should I go and... I said, no, i got to prepare the message. Come on now. I said, stay where you are. And I just went and sat down in the altar in my room. I didn't know what to say to Jesus. And I was praying up, and Brother Patrick was on the other send me the topic. Why is the topic of it? I don't even know what I'm going to say anyway. I just said, Lord, what do you want your children to hear? And by the time the, mo the word stopped from my mouth, I saw the message. And I picked up my phone. I said, I know what it is. I texted it to him. And then I said, okay, Lord, where do I get the scriptures from? And the scriptures did not come all that. And all of a sudden, I heard in my heart, Revelation 16, 15. I said, what is he talking about? I went and read it. It was exactly the topic. Praise the Lord. And I'm giving you all that testimony to say, I don't even know what I'm going to say. I'm just going to open the Bible and the Lord will speak. But this is what the Lord wants us to hear. And may I tell you that before the Lord gave me even, when the Lord gave me that topic, it felt as if I saw, who am I to say I saw the heart of God? No, but I saw something that felt like, I don't know, I'm trying to be careful with explaining what I felt. It felt as if I saw in my heart that the Lord was really speaking to his children. You know when a father speaks to a daughter? You know, it's not always, hello, how are you? It's like, I am warning you. I am telling you. That's the way it came across. The procession of the saints. It didn't come all right then. It came like that. And I was like, oh, this is a warning message. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for that. Let's pray. Amen. Father, we thank you. Amen. And we give you glory. Hallelujah. For your word said in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, say, whom the Father loveth, he chastises it. The Lord chastises his own children that he loves. The Lord warns us. Lord, we thank you 
that you have given us ears to hear correction. We thank you that you've given us heart to obey, to hear you, and to listen. You've given us the ability to practice. And we are grateful that while all the churches are staying at home and Zooming, the London Shepherd Church are here to receive your word, your correction. We are grateful, Lord. Now we ask, Father, will you speak to our hearts? Will you, Lord, use my mouth to speak your voice? Will you help me not to pretend? Will you speak exactly the way you want it to be? Thank you, Father, for your spirit is here. And you're ready to speak. And you've given us heavenly hearing aid to hear you. An ability to prepare. In Jesus' name. Speak, Lord. Holy Spirit, speak. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together. Cheer up, cheer up, cheer up. Don't cry. Don't say, oh, Father is going to read. No. Cheer up. The Lord loves us. Please, shall we go straight to Revelation? This is our homiletic point. We'll be, we'll be saying it over and over again as we carry on, as much as the Lord reminds us to. Revelation, one verse only. Let's read it together as a church. One, two, go. Behold, I come at the sea. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see shame. shame. Now let's bring that word to our world, our 21st century world, an ancient word given by God. Let's bring it to today's date. Let's bring it to postmodernity. Let's bring it to our period. Let's bring it into secularization. Let's bring it today. We all know this is quite straight. We know what a thief is. We know thieves come. They don't tell you. If they tell you, you will put on your alarm system. You will do everything. And the Lord is using that word to say, I am coming unto you. Behold, I come. He's not saying I shall come. Grammarians, you know. He's not saying I will come. He said, I come, present, right now. I come as a thief. Which means, I am not going to warn you more than the Bible has said so. Which means, yes, look at the things around you. Look at the things around you. What do you think is happening now in the world? Do you realize that? This is me now speaking. I'm speaking. Do you realize? I'm speaking through the Holy Spirit. Do you realize that when God says, I will not keep you in ignorance, right? I don't know where it's written in the Bible. I know it's there in the Bible. He said, I will not keep you ignorant. And God has used his creation, all his creation to show us right now that we are right now at the edge. The world is at edge. Even as I'm teaching this, my head is really hurting because I haven't slept for days. My head is really hurting. I couldn't think my way through this. Through this. And I said, God, you just have to teach this. You know? I come as a thief. Ah, the Spirit of God has kept me here. I'm finding it difficult to move to the next one. I come as a thief. The only warning you're going to get is the one in the Bible. Lockdown and all of that happening. Look at what has happened lately. Even unbelievers that don't know God. You see that they say, the world has changed. The world has changed. If last year you spoke with me with a glove covering your mouth, I would be offended. I would be saying, excuse you? You think my mouth smells? Excuse you? You're talking to me, you're talking to me. What's wrong with you? If I did that to you last year, 2019, December, January, <coughs> you would be upset. <coughs> Why are you doing? Why are you talking to me? You're standing away. Why are you <coughs> me you're doing this? Why are you doing all of that? You think I'm in, I have a disease, an infectious <coughs> disease? Within a very short time, that is no longer a problem. Now, it's actually a compliment. Mm. 
<laughs> if you're talking to me as soon as you put on your, your, your mask, you love me. You're, you're complete, you know. Those of us that go to the street, I experienced this last year when we came to um, when we were on the street. I was giving the police that they were doing this. I said, huh, I know the cure. I went and got my mask. I put it on my mouth. And I said, the Lord loves you and you're taking it. Why? Because now it's respectful not to touch me. It's respectful to talk and move away from me. Now it's re all the things that was <laughs> negative is now becoming positive in the world. They call it the new normal. It's actually an evidential practice of all evil becoming as good. The kids, when they speak, they go, that's sick, man, my children, when they're like, that's sick, man, that's very sick. Do you know what that means? Beautiful. <laughs> you know, so now I said to her, how did sick become beautiful? And then, so I said, who oh, this you? So these young people have been practicing this thing before it got to corona period. Now, evil is becoming. Somebody will say, can you give me a hug? I really need a hug. No, you can't. You just do like this. Love you. <laughs> we, are now <laughs> we are now distance from each other. Only within less than a year. That's how Jesus will come, you know. What is happening in our world is a pro, is a, a prep. God is preparing our mind, you know. Just as Corona came, boom, all of a sudden, I can't hug you, I can't kiss you, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't come here. If you sneeze, one minute, everybody knows. Please don't. Please don't sneeze here. <laughs> you know, so even me, when my son was started sneezing yesterday, I was like, all right, this sneeze is getting a bit too much. <laughs> I got a metalentum and a hot water, cooked hot water, Covered his head with a towel the way my mom used to do it. Let him sleep in the mental atom in the heat. And he was sweating. But I said, yeah, put your head down. Don't sneeze on me. You know? <laughs> you know, I was already preparing something to stop this sneezing. Why? You think because uh, I'm not afraid? I was. I'm like, what's this sneezing? I checked his temperature. His temperature is okay. No coughing. I said, okay, blood, it's okay. This is just cold change of weather. This is how Jesus will come. 19... Uh, 2019, 2020. Stay away from me. Stay in your house. I'll pay you salary. Stay. Stay there. Don't come out. I'll pay you. Pay your pay. Huh? Even when you are blood for income support or whatever, they say to you, no, we're not going to give it to you. But now they say, we'll give it to you. Stay home. <laughs> Life has changed just like that. The Lord is, I believe, is saying Christians. Look at your creation. Look at your world. Just in case you don't believe the Bible too much, look at your world. What is your world saying to you? What is he saying to you? Our world is saying, I come as a thief. Let's go to the next one. The next one. Sorry, the next um, line. The same verse, the same line. Revelation 16, 15. I come as a thief. And because he's coming as a thief, he's giving you and I instruction. Blessed is he that watches. So if you want, we'll stay there for a while. If you want us to watch. Are you watching? What does watching entail? This message is a very heavy message. Thank you. But the Lord has made it easy for me. And the Lord has given me you can you know that I've written things, but you've noticed I've not looked at my book. The Lord has taken over to show me how He wants it done. Blessed, so God, the blessed is He that watches. Anyone that will keep watch, blessed are you. How do you watch? Is it by coming to church? It's good, but no. How do we watch? How do you watch? Please take us. To Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26. Let's see what, what is there. Ephesians 4 26. Let's see what is there. I can't remember what is there but let's see. 4 26. I can read it from my own if you're not able to get it. It's Ephesians 4 yeah, 26. Be ye 
angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. One of the ways of watching. Be angry. In other words, if something upsets you, you can say your mind, but do not allow sin to get entangled with your anger. In other words, God is saying, do not sin. Please. How do we watch? Don't allow sun to go down on your anger. If you're angry with your sister, your brother, your world, your government, whoever you're angry with, fine, you're angry. But make sure you are watching in that biting point of anger so that you don't sin. So in other words, you are watching even when you're angry. Now he said, do not allow the sun, sun, you see the sun shall not allow it to go down when you are angry with somebody. Let not the sun go down upon your run. In other words, forgive. Plus, 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 plus. Forgive, forgive, forgive. Before the sin comes, forgive. That's how to watch. One of the ways of watching. And this is what the Lord is speaking to us today. Coming to church alone doesn't do it. Coming to church is powerful because it's the congregation of the unbelievers. Jesus, God, God says, do not absent yourself from the congregation of believers, plus or minus corona. I added that bit. But then he's saying to us, although you come, but this is what you must do. Your lifestyle, every day. Praise the Lord. Take us back to Revelation 16, 15, please. We want to look at the third line. Hallelujah. What does it mean? The third line says, I'm keeping it. Blessed, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. You keep your garments. What does garments mean? What does it symbolize in biblical terms? Righteousness. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. More? Actions. Your actions. Actions. Holiness. Holiness. It's interactive session. Please go on. What does, I rephrase the question again if you didn't hear. What does uh, uh, being clothed, spiritually, what does it mean to be clothed? Oh, to be in Christ. To be in Christ? Yes, yes, yes. That's one of our verses. Christ clothed or clothes us. Blood yes. of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. To have the armor of God. To have the armor of God. Ephesians 16. Yes. The helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. And the word of the Spirit. And the word of the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 This is, all of these and many more is what it means to have a garment. He said, and keepeth his garment, garments of righteousness. Shall we look at Luke 8.35, please? Luke 8.35. Symbolism for why you're, why you're trying to get it. Let's carry on. A lot has changed. A lot has changed, sisters. A lot has changed, brothers. Let's not stay in the house and say we are on lockdown and cook and eat. Right now, you know, a lot of people have devised many ways of handling the, pro the problem. Let's go. Look at 35. Then they went out to see, all of us, please, want to go. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed. Clothed right there. This man, his story, if you want us to get a little bit of more knowledge of what was happening there, his story is actually actually started an earlier verse, in an earlier verse, I think 20-something, but we won't go there. And in that verse, this man it was uh, had lots of demons. Everybody runs away from him. Everybody was away from him. He was naked and he had demons upon his life, upon him. But when Jesus Christ has delivered him, the people came back and saw him seated. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed, clothed, the demons have gone away. And if you read it later, later when they look at it, they say, Jesus, get away from us, get away from our region. Because they were in shock. This woman was, this man was naked, stuck naked, inside, outside. He had no righteousness. All what that was on him is demons. When people are naked, they carry demons. 
demons of lies, a lot of demons of, you know, have somebody spoken to you sometimes and, and they're talking and you know they're lying. But they have lovely suits on. They smell good. They have um, the best um, perfume whatsoever. They are hair, very nice. They look good. And the ladies, their nails are well done. Very, you know, nice. Spot on. But they are lying. And you can actually see their nakedness with the eyes of the spirit. Those are nakedness. But here, see, the man was sick. The devils had departed. So when the devil is in people, they are naked. So, Revelation, let's connect it. Revelation, therefore, the book of Revelation 16, 15 is saying, he said, be closed. In other words, don't have anything to do with demons and, 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 and Satan. The Bible said, Jesus Christ said, he, he, when he came to the Lord, he said, the Son of Man came and had nothing, and the devil had nothing of his in him. Have you read that place before in the Bible? The devil had nothing in him. So Jesus came with his cloak of righteousness. He was clothed by the Father. And so every people gravitated towards him. Demons that were naked, he clothed them. Women that were castigated and, and treated as rubbish, Jesus Christ gave them their garments of dignity mm -hmm. and said to the woman, Where are the accuser? He said, None, Lord. Jesus clothed women. Women. Jesus clothed us. I, th I think people that should be more grateful to Jesus on earth should be women. Without Jesus, I won't be standing here preaching. He said, God, shh, go, go, go to the back. Go to the back. Come, come take care of your children. <laughs> Go and make some food and get the food ready for the pastors. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus came and said, Benny, put on my cloak and stand and talk to my people. That's Jesus. Jesus took away all the nakedness that the world has. The world stripped us of all the clothing we came in. Jesus gave to us at birth. The Lord stripped it with us through our society. The fallenness and all the depravity of the world. They took it away from us. As soon as we are born, they start training us in the society. And society did all of that. But when we get Jesus, Jesus said, I'll give you your clothes back. Put it on for Jesus. Put it on for daddy. The Lord is saying, be clothed. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 15. Where were 16, 15. And the other one, he said, lest he walketh naked and they see his shame. Let's take it from all. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Can you imagine what it would be like for someone who is naked to walk into this place? Believe you me, some of us will open this place and run. <laughs> we will run. Everyone, church is over. <laughs> Okay, now let's let's make it personal. Can you imagine walking to heaven with that? All the angels go, whoa, where is she coming from? <laughs> there is no way. So Jesus is saying, heaven is not for naked people. Heaven is for people that are clothed. Heaven is for people that, that their shame has been removed with the blood of Jesus Christ. Heaven is for those that God, this world has, you know, brought nakedness upon them and Jesus has given them their upper right back. Heaven is for people who are conscious now. Let's talk about now. Those who are conscious now of their nakedness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 verse 10. What does it mean to be naked in biblical terms? In Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we see a lot of naked, naked situations. And none of them says anything good. If you, are, if you ever have a dream and you see yourself naked, it's time to pray. It's time to pray. It means shame. Shame. So we need to. Let's go. Let's read it together, saints. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. Ha! Huh. 
The procession of the saints never say you hid yourself. The procession, procession, as you know, is, you know, where you make yourself, you show up yourself. Naomi Campbell and the rest of them, you know, when they model, you know, they do all of that. They, pro, they you know, they, pro, they, they make their procession and they go like that. Look at my clothes. Yes, you can afford it. Yeah. They do all of that. Procession. And that's what Jesus Christ is telling us. You know, he said, the procession of the saints, we shall walk on that street of gold. Read it yourself later. If we have time, we'll read it. Chapter 20 of Revelation. We'll read it later if we have time. Chapter 20 and 21 of Revelation. For you to see how you will be decked. You will walk on the street of gold. And the gates of the gold, of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the gates of, the, of heaven is made of gold. Plaque of gold. The ground you walk. You may never wear gold now, gold here on earth. Maybe you and I will be wearing the fake ones that we wear, you know, <laughs> all of that. But in heaven, you see the real gold. And the Lord is inviting us. Look at what nakedness did there. These are human beings that God created, but with his hands. This is not talking about this one gave birth to that, that one gave birth to that one. Gave. No, Jesus, made, God made them in Jesus. And he said... I heard that, because of time we can read from the beginning, you can read it later on the whole chapter. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. So naked people can still hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. But what do they hear? When they hear the voice of God, they tremble. Oh, we're naked. We're naked. We don't want him to see us like this. And I was afraid. When people are naked, they are scared. Have you ever wondered why people throw stones at Christianity? Have you ever wondered why they throw stones at Christianity? They're telling the truth. Fear, yes, because the mm. Bible tells the truth. And truth can be really scary on your face. Truth can be scary. And because they're scared, they first of all throw the stone. You believe in all of that. The, oh, that was written by a human being. Come on now. But yet they go to university and graduate with words written by human beings. Wow. <laughs> yet they become doctors and they cut people open because of what is written by another human being. But what is written by God is written by human beings. They cast all the stones upon us. Have you noticed that no religion has ever been attacked or will ever be attacked like Christianity that tells the truth? When people are afraid, they hide. They hide, they put a wall because they don't want to hear it. They don't want to know it. That is him. So these are human beings that God created with his own hands. Yet, they were deceived. And because they were deceived, they lost their cloth. Their cloth was invisible. The righteousness God has given to us is invisible, it's inside. But it is visible on our behavior. The righteousness God gave them, the clothing God gave to them was inside them. But then, when they committed sin, we saw their nakedness. That they, they, they even saw it before anyone else because there was no one else to witness that apart from God and the angels. They saw that they were naked and they were also afraid. He said, because I was naked and I hid myself. And later on the Lord said, who told you you are naked? Why did God ask that question? God has nothing to do with sin. So if one steps away, you realize that you're naked. That takes me to my next point. When we are naked, we know. When we are sinning, we know. No matter how many times you come to church, we know. We know. So as we preach this message, check yourself. Check yourself and get ready. The, 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 the pandemic that has occurred and happened, the, the phenomenon that the world is going through now is, a, is, is, a, is an expression to believers that God is saying, I am coming. To the world, therefore, God will come as a thief. But to us, he has already given us all the one. Be ready. Your words. Don't be naked, brother. Don't be naked, sister. Don't be naked. Children of God are not supposed to be naked. So what do we do now? We have to arouse from our spiritual slumber. Mm -hmm. To be in a state of vigilance. That's what
what we have to do. We have to wake up. We need to wake up. Christians, wake up. Be in a state of vigilance or action. Ephesians chapter 5, please. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14 to 20. This is what we are called to do. The Lord is arousing us. Wake up, thou slumber, thou slugger. Wake up. The book of Proverbs says, wake up. Yes, there is pandemic. You are baking at home. You are cooking. You are eating. Oh, thank God you're no longer going to work. You're working from home. Yes, but wake up. Use that time to read your Bible. It's time to read your Bible. Stop going all over the place and doing things that are irrelevant. It's time for you to read your Bible. Wake up in the morning. Do your quiet and read your Bible. Find a way. If I am a nurse, which I am, and I come to look after you, give you injection. I never went to nursing school. Won't you sue me for even thinking about it that I'm going to give you injection? And I come and give you a toilet. Here you go. You say, you a nurse. I said, no. What are you doing here? I'm just supporting. He said, come, take that thing off me. You can make medication that I don't even understand. What am I trying to say? Is it there? What am I trying to say? That we need to wake up. Let's read. It's up to way all the way to 20. Wherefore, he said, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Go on, 15. See then, see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Stop there, for we're going to go forward a bit. You know that we said, Walk intentionally, circumspect, walk with intention. Come to church with intention. You know, I'm so, I get so disappointed. I'm sorry. I'm going to allow my African self to come up a little bit here. You know, I get so, so, so disgusted with, with Western world Christianity sometimes. You know, I'm taking the children to the games today. I'm not able to come to church. Will you pray for me? Oh, my hand hurts. I want my finger with little hot water. It really hurts. Come, come to church. Will you pray for me? Oh, um, my glasses break. You know I can't read the Bible without it. Will you pray for me? And then we'll go, because we want to be politically correct. Because we want to be British citizen. Yes, sister, I will. Sometimes I may not respond to you that way, I'm sorry. Sometimes it comes very hard like an African woman. And say, you sinner, get your bottom up and come to church. When we come, have you, every time I'm ill, I can't believe I'm speaking like this. I was sitting down shaking. I haven't been well. Because I have robbed myself, my body, of sleep. My head is constantly hurting. My body is shaking. I only had some yogurt, plain yogurt, this, just to give me some strength. I'm coming up, I'm shaking. But can you imagine how strong I am now? The gathering of the saints bring energy. Synergy is one than electricity, the one in things, near where my sister is living at. The way you come together, disease run away, and that's why it's always wanting to hold you back. You watch these innocent teenagers I love. Mwah. You watch them sing and worship with their in their sorry in their virginity. You know what I mean? In their virgin life, just baked out of oven, untouched. And they sing like the Levites. How can you be ill after here? You cannot. That's why the devil wants you to stay home. Mm. We see Pastor Paul day after day with vertigo. He will say, come. And when he's holding here, I say to myself, oh yeah, he can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not letting go the pulpit. I said, oh yeah. <laughs> and he's sitting there from me. Walk circumspectly. Walk with intention. Come to church with intention. Serve God with intention. Wake up with intention. Wake up and stop looking for the, uh, okay, I have to do that, I have to do this. I know you have to do all of that. See how God has been faithful to me. Do you know all these days I've been writing essay? I leave my essay. I say, I say in the garden, my neighbors, they people, like some of them, well, sometimes when they pick my eyes, God theirs, and they smile. Mm. I am in the garden worshiping. And what part of my heart is saying, Bernie, you got to write your essay. I say, yes, later. I will wash it. And sometimes I dance. One day my neighbor looked through the window. He said, yeah, raise the volume up. Raise 
and she was dancing from her window. <laughs> her children would come and peep at her. Mom. And when they tell her, she'd come. Yes, yeah, sister Benny, come on, let's do it. And she jumped from her. She had with one hand on her wing and one leg and she was doing that. I don't know if she was, if it was mocked. I don't know what it was, but whatever it was, something was touching her. The, my neighbors on the left, my neighbor, when they see me, they go like this. Good morning, <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I have finished the essay. I have finished the essay now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Without forgetting my God. Without waking up and thinking my hero. I still study. I said, Lord, before I go and study, I say, Oh Lord, it's 3, 3 p.m. now. Oh, I've worshipped all day. So, how many hours have I gone? I said, okay, I stay awake at night, Lord. I stay awake at night. And then I will sing. And even after, even after three, I'm still praising. At 6 p.m., I'm like, it's 6 p.m. I haven't got more time to study today again. Oh, Lord, I've used all the day to worship you. Now is your time to offer me. And I tell you, the result of the, some of the essays I've written is out. And I made it to the top. The ones that are out, there are some that are not out. I got great... Good marks. Praise God. I told my sister that I, I gave her my books to read for me because I said I, I thought I wouldn't be able to read it. Sister, can I tell you, I finished reading the two books in four days. Yes. Yes. I'm not very good at reading. So I said, well, how can I read this book? Because I have to read the book and review it. And my sister, my sister Nadia helped me to do some work. This church is so good. Pastor Paul prays nonstop. Brother Patrick prays non-stop and Brother Patrick proofreads. He proofreads for me. And my sister here waits for me for us to go home together. And then I uh, uh, see my sister Julia gave me that the first time I started the course, she gave me her, her book, big book like that. She gave it to me. I mean, everybody here is like we are all doing the job together. We're all studying it together. And I bring you this good news that I did not study and leave my Bible. I read my Bible, read my Bible, read my, every day, read it. You know, sometimes I'll read five chapters, six chapters. You know, when I finish reading, then I'll dance. I'll dance in my garden. I'll make, I'll put the last speaker. Hey, I'll be dancing. And, you know, <laughs> and then when I finish dancing, I'm sweating. I said, oh Lord, okay, I, I need to write now. And I don't know what to write, Lord. <laughs> but yet it comes. Yes, Please, sister. Pastor Bernie, can you tell me what multivitamin you're taking? <laughs> His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. You know, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. So I'm saying all that to say, don't leave, don't draw your crown on Jesus and you wake up in the morning, I'm going to wash these dishes, I'm going to take those children to school, I'm going to do that. Bad mistake. That's not how to worship God circumspectly. That's not how to do it with intention. All those things may distract you. And when the thief, our God comes like a thief, you probably, God forbid, no, none of those people who are here, Christians that are not here, praise the Lord, <laughs> that will be doing all of that. My hair is greasy. I need to dry it. Uh, my hair needs grease. I need to do it. My face, I need to go to the nail shop. I'm not saying these things. You guys know that I love fashion and I do all of it. But I'm saying, don't allow it to take the place of your reading the Bible. Don't allow the children God has given to you for blessing to become a curse that stopped you from going to heaven. Don't allow the beautiful job God has given to you to take the first place whereby you now miss heaven. Don't allow that to happen. Don't allow that to happen. Don't allow that to happen. Don't, don't, don't allow that to happen. Give God the first place. Amen. Even those of us that go to the street to preach. While we are preaching, we first of all examine ourselves. So that at the end, we will not, God will not use us to preach and then we, God says, I don't know you. God forbid. So we, we preach to ourselves. We manage ourselves, our attitude circumspectly. Walk with intention. As soon as you wake up, it's time to walk with intention. Walk with intention. Wash those plates, those dishes and serve the Lord. Drive that car and glorify the Lord. Do all of that in the law. And that is part of how to be in a state of vigilance. Be in vigilance, in action. Please, let's carry on with the remaining last down. You may not that your verse. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Go on. Amen. Redeeming the time. Look at that. I didn't even see that before. Redeeming the time. 
because the days are evil. Pandemic, corona, lockdown, plus. We don't know what is coming next. We don't know. Because the days are evil. Go on. See then, redeeming the time. Hallelujah. Off the way to, to verse 20. We don't have to read all of it here. Wherever we stop, the time we stop, please. I don't even know what time I started. So when we start, can you sit down to me to stop? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the, the Lord is saying to us, get ready, get ready. Get ready. Go on, the next one. Go on. The, get ready, brothers. Get ready, sisters. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Go on, go on, go on. And be not drunk with wine, wherein in is excess, but be filled with the Spirit of God. Go on. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. To the Lord, sometimes you may be in a place where you cannot sing it out. Make melody in your heart, in your heart for the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 20, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we say, Amen. This is the act of vigilante. God wants us to be vigilant. Now, let's run. I've got to plus where we now need to run. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. I'm trying to look for the verse now. 1 Corinthians 15, 53, yes. 53. 1 Corinthians 15, 53. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's get serious. In other words, if you look at the whole message, all this message is telling us is be serious with your God. For this community, corruptible, must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. When we are here on earth, we need to put on the immortality of God. We need to put out the liveliness, the livelihood of God in Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's run to the next one. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 5, 2 to 4. Second Corinthians chapter 5, 2 to 4. Hallelujah. The message, all this message, this, this message is not saying, um, you know, you know, it's not it's not a long story, it's just saying, be serious. Be serious. Two to four. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chiefs of the fathers of the children of Israel unto Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David. No, no, no. Corinthians, not Chronicles. Okay, Corinthians, sorry. yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hallelujah. Sorry, sorry. Second Corinthians 5, two to four. So this message is saying, be ready. Get ready. Come to church, yes. Stop flimsy excuses why you don't come to church. Stop it. Come to church. Serve with the children of God. Encourage others. Share the gospel to your family. Thank you, my sister, for what you're doing for your, your father. Let's go. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Hallelujah. Let's go. Let's go. If so be... Sorry. Go back to three. Okay. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. naked. So when the Lord comes, when we are clothed with all of these, all of these, we will not be found naked. Maybe he comes as a thief. Let's go on. Next one. For we that are in this tabernacle do grown, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of, of life. Okay, let me round up what that place is saying. In other words, we are, the Holy Spirit help me. That we clothe ourselves in Jesus. That the word of Jesus clothes us, clothes us. His livelihood clothes us. The life of Jesus, which he came here as a human being to show us a sign, what it feels like to be a human being. Jesus came as a human being in order to show us what it means to be a human being. He showed us how to behave to our parents. He showed us how to walk in the society. He showed us how to forgive people. He showed us how to go out and evangelize. He showed us how to cast away demons. He showed us how to have a quiet time with, the, with his father. He showed us how to walk on waters, miracles. He showed us so many things with his life. When he now he said, he said, 
Behold, I go to my father, and where I'm going, he said, I shall return and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. What he said, prepare. Prepare. Because you will not come with nakedness into the gates of heaven. The angels will close the gates. You're not coming in with nakedness. No. You have to be closed. You have to be closed. Pray, praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go. Is that it? Okay, yes. Hallelujah. So let's get ready, sisters. Let's go to the very um, towards the end now. Characteristics of those who are awake. Those that are instructions for those who are awake. What is the characteristic of those that are awake? Ephesians 4.26 How do you know you are awake? Coming to church? No, anybody can come to church. Satan comes to church with you. Satan comes to church with these demons. And that's why when we pray, they can't stand there. Yes, let's go. 4.26 Oh, we've done that already. We've read that already before. Oh, uh, Ephesians 5.15 Sorry, to the end. Ephesians 5.15 the next, the next chapter. What are the characteristics that shows that we are awake? We are not naked, naked. We are closed. We are right. What are the characteristics? How would you know? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See then that you walk circumspectly. Oh, we've done that. Not as fools, but as wise. Let's read it again. Go on. The next one. The next one. The next one, 16. I've mixed things up a little, but that's okay. So there is a behavior. Where did I write that now? There is a behavior that God wants us to have. Redeem the time because the uh, days are evil. Yes. Redeeming the time. Yes, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Another next one. Next one. I know we've read it to before. Next one. What are our characteristics? Okay. Hallelujah. So as people who are children of God, we walk redeeming the time. We walk circumspectly. Wherefore, be ye not unwise. So we walk with our characteristics. Characteristics of those who are awake in God are characteristics of those who are wise. Those who have understanding. Those who, what the, who knows what the will of God, the Lord is. That is our characteristics. That's the place I'm looking for. I can't believe I didn't write it down. What I'm looking for is where it says, uh, um, I think it's in, it's, it's in the Ephesians as well, where it says, uh, sin not, uh, uh, um, do not covet, do not uh, commit, they do not commit, that. that's what I'm looking for. I thought I wrote it, where it gives us Colossians 3.12. Colossians 3.12, <laughs> yeah. hallelujah. We are walking as people who are clothed, 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 clothed in righteousness. After that is Romans 13.14. After Colossians 3.12, Romans 13.14. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, be full of mercy, be kind, be loving, be holy, be beloved, be a beloved of God. Kindness, humble, be humble. It doesn't matter how much is in your account, be humble. Humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. These are all our characteristics while we come to church. I, I, it's, it's, I won't even say, oh, don't, don't commit this adultery. No, no, no. None of us are doing all of that. But now, he, God is taking us to something more deeper. Personal, something nobody will know. Don't fake humility. Oh, that's all right. No, be humble. Don't fake it. Learn to be long suffering when things are happening in your life. Be patient that it will come to an end. You know, allow the, allow God to walk you from that situation and take you somewhere. Even in that situation, be merciful. When I'm writing my essay, there are people that were calling me too for help. You know what? I was a bit angry at first. I was like, Whoa. I've only got a few hours, so now I have to explain. And then the Spirit of God will be speaking to me. I said, Okay, what do you want? And I'll begin to share, okay, this is what I've written. And sometimes the human being, I confess my sin, the human being in me sometimes, I don't want to tell them what, because I want to get better, man. <laughs> and the Spirit of God will say to me, no, you say it all. And I say, okay. Is this? <laughs> that is a human being for you. Yes. That's a human being for you. I actually 
called one lady, she gave me a wrong, a wrong idea. <laughs> and when she gave me the wrong idea, the Lord corrected her and said, hmm, see that girl? She was thinking like me before. <laughs> and I emailed the lecturer, and the lecturer, the lecturer gave me exactly what I was thinking. I didn't call her back. I wasn't angry with her either, because I was like that as well. I didn't, I didn't give somebody wrong, wrong um, information, but I didn't want to give them all. I just said, give me, let them go and find out. I've read all day. You know, let them go and read their book and find out the answer. <laughs> the Bible said, be kind, have bowels of mercy, be merciful. Where they are, you were there before. In another way, in another picture, be merciful. The people we preach to on the street, some of them, if they know our life, they will spit on us. But thank God Jesus Christ has taken it away. He said, he said Behold, your sin I remember no more. So who are we to go on the seat and look at them? Look at what she's wearing. Look at all of that. You know? No. You know, I've got teenagers. When they wear this little thing, they do all of that. And I said, Mother, I'm very close to saying, Look at what she's wearing. But I just said, Baby, you know, I can say that. He said, Can you, Mama? I said, Yes. And she'll pull it down. I said, bless you, darling. Because <laughs> I don't want to judge her. You know what? Because I know. I know when I was an unbeliever, a lot of my nakedness, I mean spiritual nakedness, have been thrown in the open. Who am I to begin to tell a young teenager? Who am I? Let's be kind. In our preaching, let's be kind. When we rebuke people, let's be kind. Let's show mercy. Let's show humility. Let's show that we, we, are, also, we are also coming from there. Let's rebuke with caution. Amen. Let's rebuke people with caution. Amen. Let's rebuke people outside the church or inside the church with caution. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we give Jesus a round of applause? Amen. Let's read our first homiletic point. Back and I'm done. First one. Revelation 15, 16. Behold, can we all say it together, please? Behold, Behold I come as a thief. thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't see my shame, please. And I hope you do the same. You are in the spirit. I was going to say any question there. Yes, please. Bernice, you talked about where it says in the Bible, ignorant. I believe it's in the first three verses of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant concerning the scriptures yes. that Christ died for our sins and was raised the third day. Yes, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I stopped because I wrote here at the end when I was preparing. Any question, please? Question. Every time I stand here, I actually want opportunities. Of if the, I want people to ask questions. Is there any question about the procession of the saints that we are going to heaven? That Jesus is coming. I'm not going to say it's, very, it's a lot. I didn't go. The Lord did not want me to teach that way. Pastor Paul, you know that teaching is very heavy when you talk about the rapture and the heaven, second heaven, first heaven. No. But I believe what the Lord wants us to do is prepare the procession of the saints. Is going to happen in heaven. That's why we are coming to church. That's why we come here, Corona or no Corona, to hear the word of God. This is not a community center. It can be. This is not a place for fun. It can be. But this is a place of teaching. This is a place where we want to hear God. We want, and this is not where, give me Lord, give me, heal my knee. That's me. Heal my knee, heal my head, heal my this, pass my ace. <laughs> not just that. This is a place we come to hear. The Bible says, let him that have ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. Any question? Anyone has any question? If you don't want, yes, please. What do you expect um, students to do? Because now, especially now, all the children are like Fortnite and short clothes and stuff like that. And they talk about things that make me uncomfortable, and I don't want to be that girl who goes rebuking them. Yeah. So, so you're what asking what what will create? In other words, Christians who are students in the in, this, in that environment, what do you do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. May this Holy Spirit may you answer this question. Amen. 
Be who Jesus wants you to be. What did Jesus do when he went to the, to the house of deliver, the tax collector? What did he do? Did he castigate him? What did Jesus do when he went the woman, who uh, Mary Magdalene, whom they wanted to kill, what did he do? He said and slap him. You this stupid woman, you sell yourself. That's not what he did. What did he do to you when you were in sin? In other words, the, the answer I believe the Spirit of God is putting put in my heart is be the best of Jesus. In other words, be loving, be kind, be humble. Be understanding where they are. What you are doing here, they don't do. They don't understand. What you are fed, they don't have it. So you cannot be giving them carbohydrate and tell them, oh, you're not looking well. You're, you look like you look. I'm using that as an example. Oh, you've been eating rubbish food when they cannot afford the normal food. So they, they don't come to church. They don't know. Their grandparents are atheists, secularists, and all of that. They don't know anything. They are like wind, you know. Every, you know they, they're everywhere. Have that understanding and be compassionate. And love them. And the Bible says, be ready to answer people who ask you questions about your faith. When they now ask you then, why are you like this? Use that opportunity to bring the message of faith. And let that be seen in your eyes with humility, not judgment. Say to them, you know, Jesus Christ, this is who Jesus is. And say, if you if you want more time, say them, is it okay if we have lunch together during our lunch break time we can talk? Don't run away from them. Show them that you're a human being. Show them you're a human being in Jesus. And that is infectious. Amen. 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 Anyone? Yes. Let's show Christ. Eh? Show Christ. Show Christ. Show who Christ is. Mm. Christ is humble. Christ does not condemn us. Christ, he, he, read about his children here. He's warning us to get ready. But he doesn't condemn us. Yes. So don't condemn them. Don't say, oh, look at what you're wearing. What's this? You're going to hell. No. Not good. You know, oh, why do you do? You're always seeking attention. No. If you didn't have Christ, believe me, you will seek attention. If we don't, do not have it, we will seek attention. Plus, plus, plus. But because we have Christ, we don't seek attention. So don't judge them. Even the people you meet on the street. You know, knowing Christ has helped me to understand my neighbors more. You know, I know the Lord told me one day to not, I knock at them 12 doors around me. And I knock at their doors. And I say to them, when they open, I say, You are beautiful. They say, Okay, yeah, thank you. And I went to that one. Open. See? You're so beautiful. Okay. You too. And then some of them, then I talked a little bit about the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So if somebody wants to come and stay, park, park in my position now, where I normally park. My neighbor said, that's, that's Bernie's park. Can you move your car? I'm not even there. They fight for me now. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and they will fight for you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Any more questions because of time? No, we go. Yes, my sister. Okay. Uh, all females, do you have a certain scripture that you say you should read every day? Scriptures um, for women, I, I think the scriptures about the woman at the, at the well is a very good one. Okay. Chapter 4, John chapter 4. Uh, if you read the whole of it, you'll find out where you fit in there. The other one for women is Mary Magdalene, uh, uh, the one that was taken in adultery. You know, so not that we are adulterers, no, but just that you know, don't allow anyone to condemn you. Don't allow anyone to condemn you. For Proverbs chapter thirty-one. Yes, Proverbs chapter thirty-one tells you a whole about uh, uh, the woman. You know, the one who goes afar to get her food, a hard-working woman. Thank you. That is from our Old Testament perspective. The one I'm saying is from New Testament perspective. Anymore. And after the service, if you want to ask any more, I believe the Holy Spirit will, especially concerning the message, possession of the saints. Keep your mind on that message and daily begin to ask the Lord how you can prepare yourself to model before the Lord. I'm here, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's ask Amen. Yeah, the big offering for Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. One more scripture for me, please. Revelation chapter 19, verse 8 and 9. Revelation chapter 19, verse 8 and 9. The Holy Spirit gave me desire to see this. Revelation 19, verse 8 and 9. The same thing is about the. Uh, yeah. Revelation chapter 19, verse 8 and 9. If you see, can you read together? Revelation 19, verse 8 and 9. 
Okay, one, two, three. And her heart was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Hallelujah. Can you show me the words that you must say? Do you know what is a, a fine cloth? What is fine cloth? White, white, fine men. What is that? Lord of Jesus. Righteousness of our saint. Hallelujah. Righteousness of our saint. You know, when you hear the message today, be kind, be compassionate, be humble. And then you can see people will start a new life. You know, this is a kind of, uh, shared her daughter, Gabriela, she become a born again when she studied in university. And then she, she did her best to support your family. And then now you become born again. You see? And then now you can do it for your husband. Do it for your Claudia, your daughter. Do it for your daddy. Do it. Your neighbors and your family we will start a new life. Can you stand up? Can I challenge you? Can I encourage you? Be serious with Lord Jesus. Yeah. Let us pray.